During each month's meetings, our board hears topics and reports that fall under three main category headings. One would be the strategic plan, the other would be the core business of student learning, and the other would be the operational effectiveness of the district. In this particular clip, we're gonna focus on the operational effectiveness of Henry County Schools. There were several topics and reports that were given to the board, but the one we're gonna focus on in this particular clip uh, centers around the financial development calendar for the upcoming uh, budget cycle. And we have our chief officer, Ms. Shanika Clay, who's providing some of the highlights um, for this particular report to the board. So let's take a look. There are a myriad of external and internal inputs that must be considered in developing a budget for each of those funds. The timing of when key information is available drives the timeline that you see presented in the budget calendar. Before I present the budget calendar, I would like to first walk through a visual that outlines the sequence of events that supports budget development. The specifics of budget development processes for each of the funds will vary. I am going to focus on the general fund as I walk through this visual outline because it has a variety of inputs and I think it'll be a helpful um, use case. So the general fund receives state, local, and federal funds, but the state and local funding account for 99.5% of our general fund revenues, which are allocated to those general fund purposes. Accordingly, the external activity, such as the governor's budget recommendations, the state budget process, and Henry County's tax assessor processes have a significant impact on our system's budget planning. We carefully monitor the news coming from the governor's office and the Gold Dome from January to April to identify and analyze the legislative activity and its impact on school system financials and our budget development process. To forecast the local revenues, we partner with the tax assessor's office to understand changes that are occurring in the local tax digest. And this information begins to emerge in March and is continually refined until the assessor appeals process ends. As the General Assembly and local tax officials complete work that informs revenue forecasting and provides intel on potential new costs associated with legislation, the superintendent directs a series of internal tasks to develop allocation recommendations that support student learning at the highest levels. As you may recall from our time together last year, there are multiple opportunities for board members to share budgetary priorities that inform the superintendent's budget recommendations. Board, we know that you take responsibility to affect change through fiscal allocations seriously. The work of the board and the prior boards has resulted in intentional investments in salaries, instructional resources and supports, and safe and secure learning environments. We know that this board remains committed to ensuring competitive salaries to ensure and support the recruitment and retention of highly effective teachers and leaders. And this year, we anticipate the availability of information from compensation and class studies to inform personnel investments for FY23 and beyond. Other key inputs into the budget development process include enrollment projections, school and division assessments, and strategic investment priorities. With the launch of our five-year community-inspired plan, we have a powerful resource that embodies the hopes, dreams, and voices of our community that will serve as a critical input into the FY23 budget cycle and future budget cycles. The leadership team is actively engaged in deep review of the strategic action plan to identify the personnel, instructional, and operational investments that are required to accomplish the goals our community and this board have outlined. So I'm gonna pause before I move from this slide because I do wanna orient you to this visual because um, I believe it really speaks to the sequencing of events and how the information becomes available for us to then share. So the legislature will convene in January. In fact, the date this year is January the 11th and within five days of them convening, the governor is required to give them a budget. The House will have a view of the budget. The Senate will have a view of the budget, similar to what you see in the, the national politics. And if they don't have the same budget, which typically they do not, there's a conference where they work through uh, to get to a common recommendation and appropriations. The appropriations budget, which you'll see, is somewhere usually in the April where the um, legislative cycle is beginning to end, will go then to the governor, who will then execute that budget and approve it. So it's in April where things really begin to finalize, but as you know, we're constantly um, meeting with you all, hearing from you all. This year we'll be able to look at our strategic plan. There's a number of other inputs. We have enrollment projections, we have our staff allotments, we have the school needs assessments, and again, there's gonna be the new compensation and class studies as information will be available this year. With 99.5% of our budget being tied to that state and local input, 
you'll see that the picture begins to crystallize around April, which is when we begin to put information in front of you and to the public. The superintendent is required to present a balanced budget each year, and so you'll see that the external activity which sets the parameters is then what allows us to then construct the expenditures. So I hope this visual demonstrates um, that there are a lot of processes and inputs that must be considered during the budget development process. And so with an understanding of those key inputs and timing, I will now present the FY23 budget development calendar, and this document will be available in the board meeting attachments. As I shared earlier, the state legislative, legislative session will run January to early April. I will provide reports in February and March to update the board on the economic outlook and budget forecasting impacts from information that's coming from the General Assembly. On April 18th, I will present the tentative budget and we will hold our first of two required budget hearings. Following the hearing, the board will be presented with the opportunity to adopt a tentative budget. I will follow back in May 9th to present the second presentation of a budget recommendation, and we will have our second budget hearing following that, and the board will have the opportunity to adopt the final proposed budget. Thank you very, very much for taking the time to do this for us, because I believe the board, a better informed board, we can make better decisions together. While this is just a monthly recap of the Board of Education meetings, you can find the full-length version by visiting our website or clicking on the links in the description section below.